now to unwind the thing and let the flow start again. When we energize a circuit, what we actually do, how we actually power an electric circuit, not what the textbook says, forget that, that's a hundred and something years old. Suppose I have a generator. I'm going to very crudely draw a little generator here. And of course, I've got a positive pole. I'm going to put that positive, positive terminal, and I've got a negative terminal. And I've got a rotating generator here that's rotating around inside. And I crank the shaft out here. My job is to crank the shaft and turn it. What happens when I crank the generator? I do mechanical energy input, and I have to do work because that's not what I want. I want a rotating magnetic field. So I have got to turn this shaft rotation mechanical energy into magnetic field energy. That requires work. That's why I have to crank the shaft. Once I get the magnetic field energy inside the generator, here are the lines going out from the generator to the whole power grid and feeding jillions of loads for 100 miles. Where does the magnetic energy go? It doesn't leave the generator. It doesn't go out on the lines. It doesn't go power any loads. What it does inside the generator, it pushes the positive charges. I suppose this is the positive terminal. This is the negative. It pushes the positive charges this way up to that terminal, pushes the negative charges that way. It separates the charges, which does a little kink in the space out here and makes this plus and this minus. It makes that entire vast circuit dipolar, a dipole, a whole set of dipoles. And every place, once we have this dipolarity, all along here, we're extracting energy out of the vacuum, and it's pouring right on down the circuit. But the energy is not coming from what we crank the shaft of the generator from at all. Once we make the dipole, the energy is coming out of the vacuum to the dipole. Here's a dipole, here's a dipole, here's a dipole, here's a, everywhere dipoles. So we're having energy born in the circuit everywhere in this dipolarity. It's between, from the vacuum. The biggest dipole is right here in the generator, okay? We go out here and we have, now we call this progression of dipolarity, we call that potentializing the circuit, making a potential between these two lines, a difference in potential. As we potentialize this circuit, we create little force fields which push the electrons forward as current, push it through the load, and we dissipate some energy in the load, power the load. We lose some in the losses and so forth. But all of that is free, except we have now wired the generator in to the external circuit. Anything, any current that moves this way has to move this way. So what we have is from this pole, this positive pole, around through the circuit to this point on the grounded side here, let's say this is the grounded side, the voltage is exactly the same as the negative of the voltage going up the other way against the EMF. So we make all the current that goes out to, in the losses and the loads, we make equal current to go back through all these separated charges that we paid such hard labor and money to separate, knock the charges out of there and, and destroy the dipole. The moment we destroy the dipole, we lose the flow of energy from the vacuum because now there's no broken symmetry. So we have to crank the shaft of the generator some more, turn it a little bit more, make some more magnetic field energy, so that we can make the charges move back apart and restore the dipole and, and cut the vacuum energy flow on again. Whereupon the silly circuit, this closed current loop circuit, uses half of everything it catches of free energy to destroy the dipolarity. So we pay the power company to engage in a giant wrestling match inside its own generator and lose by continuing to destroy its dipolarity and the source of vacuum energy faster than we allow it to power the load. It's the stupidest circuit that anybody could ever originate in powering systems. But it's nice and well behaved because it shorts out everything that wouldn't be well behaved, and it forces that thing to be under unity. You will always have less power in these loads, all told, than you have to keep cranking into the shaft of the generator. And it's responsible for destroying much of the biosphere, polluting everything, and all this. We don't have to do it that way at all. If we make the dipole, and stop and leave it alone. Do not let any current flow in this circuit here while we're collecting the potential. Just let them potentialize. Once we have the potential difference, switch away this generator, get rid of it, disconnect it, 
connect a diode, for example, that would only allow a flow in one direction. And now the energy, the excess energy can discharge by only making the energy flow until it dies. And that energy now can be used to power the load for free except for switching costs. You pay a little to switch, you get a lot of power in your load, you're now off of the leaky diode, the leaky pipe method of powering things, which the closed current loop circuit forces on you, and you're down to the triode method. Pay a little bit for the grid signal and use a lot of energy in the load. You're now in the COP greater than one systems. So that's the way we ought to be doing electric power. We ought to be taking nature's lesson to heart. Leave the dipole in static configuration with no current flowing through it. It will radiate energy then forever. It's a perpetual energy generator. It's converting virtual energy of the vacuum into real honest to God energy and pouring it out all the time for you then to turn your grad students loose and your sharp young postdocs loose with some funding and time and study to determine real good ways to catch and use the steady flow of energy without destroying the dipole in the generator.